are back looking at dialogue. Last week we learnt the mechanics of dialogue and today we're going to look at how to fine tune your speeches to make them their best version of themselves. Let's start out with character voices. This is actually a really important thing but so many people seem to find it hard to keep track of ca their characters individual voices and then all the dialogue just like tends to blend together. Each character needs to have a distinct and unique voice that is distinguishable from each other and from your own narrative writer's voice. Ideally, your reader should be able to tell who is talking by the way they speak, their speech patterns and their tone. You should be able to hear your characters in your head as they're talking and have a defined idea of how they speak. And this needs to be translated to paper. If your characters sound too similar, not only when Will they blend together? They will also be boring. Talking of boring, tip number two. Can the small talk. I talked about this and gave examples in my series on mistakes that novice writers make, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But the main thing to remember is that small talk is boring as fuck. In the real world, when we meet up with friends, we do what I call the quick catch up, you know. How are you doing? How are the kids? How's work? Yeah, it's good. Kids are doing great. Just moved up a year at school. Work sucks. You know the drill. But for a reader, that shit is boring. We don't need to read all that. We want to get to the juicy bits. So if none of that is relevant, cut that shit. Cut it out. Bye bye. Gone. Unimportant conversations are not a way to boost your word count. Dialogue should never be used as filler, ever. That may, It may seem like a great idea to flesh your story out, but believe me, it would do more harm than good. I'd much rather lose 500 words in a story than have to read a boring filler conversation that adds absolutely nothing. One thing I will just throw in here is the fact that so many people add character names to their dialogue. Okay, let me explain. If you went out and you listened to a conversation between two people, they would very rarely, if ever, say each other's names within a sentence or with each sentence. They just don't. This doesn't show that the characters are aware of each other or that they're paying attention, as people might think it does. It just feels false. And honestly, it feels like your character voice and dialogue tags just aren't strong enough for us to know who's speaking. So you threw a name up in there to make sure that we knew. Actually think about how many times you say someone's name when speaking to them. And I can guarantee that the answer will be never. You likely won't even say their name when you greet them. You'll be like, hey you, hi right, hun, hi babe. That's how we talk. We don't go, Nicole, hi. Gemma, how are you doing? I don't think I want to talk to you right now, Francis. Cut those out if you do them. They're weird, and if it's for identification purposes, that's cheating. One bugbear for a lot of people is over-enthusiastic dialogue tags. I hear people shouting the virtues of a simple he said, she said, and that it's an invisible word that readers will just skip over. And that might be true for a lot of people, but personally, I do notice them and I find them a little bit boring. I much prefer to break them up with a few simple dialogue tags. Okay, I'm not saying that you need to go like overboard with the descriptions. He exclaimed, she giggled, he crooned, she interjected. Some of them can be more telling than showing when it comes to a dialogue. If you use the speech words properly, you shouldn't have to explain the tone or the mood of the dialogue. Static characters are another problem when it comes to dialogue. You won't need as many dialogue tags if you substitute tags for actions. Static characters are boring characters. A whole ream of dialogue, one character after the other, back and forth, back and forth, will be boring to read. Readers like to picture the whole story in their heads. And if that's all they have to read, all they will see in their heads are your characters standing there like cardboard cutouts talking in bland, boring voices to each other. It's not fun at all. 
use your actions to show who's speaking. Jack made a grab for, his, for the phone on the table. If you've got nothing to hide, then you won't mind me looking at this. Nicole crossed her arms, glaring at him as he scrolled through her phone. Go ahead. I've got nothing to hide. She reached for her coffee cup and took a sip. Jack tossed the phone back down with a frustrated growl. I know you've something to do with this. You're working with him. I know it. Nicole carefully set her cup aside and looked him directly in the eyes. Think what you want. I know the truth. I didn't need a single dialogue tag there. And not a single he said, she said. Because the action showed us who was speaking and kept them moving as well. No one is ever static when they are speaking. They might gesture with their hands, fiddle with their glasses, they might check their phone. We are all living things and living things move. Showing what is going on around your characters can help as well. They aren't sat in an empty room. If they're in a coffee shop, show the waitress moving around, customers queuing for their drinks, a child screaming in the background because his mum's not letting him have that cream cake. All of this will disturb your characters and it will make them react. Always remember that the main aim we have is to make things interesting without being pretentious, boring or unimportant. Practice makes perfect. So read some of your favourite books to see how other writers do it. Read plays, read screenplays, read transcripts. See the way that the dialogue is mixed in with some actions and some direction. Watch chat shows and soap operas to see how people interact with each other, how they move, how they talk and how a conversation flows naturally. That's all for today. Until next time, blessed be and happy writing.